what's up and welcome back today we have finally reached one month with this klr which obviously i've put a ton of miles on it now we're at 2500 and i have been riding this thing every single day since i got it except for maybe two days in heavy rain i am truly enjoying it because i have quite a few motorcycles and this happens to be the one i continually go back to uh, let's face it, the main reason for that is that it's an amazing commuting motorcycle. Even with the fact that it is buzzy and a little bit vibrating, it is so easily looked past when you're comfortably riding down the road and have the abilities that this bike does for the price point. So I figured why not give you guys the things I'm, I'm really liking about the motorcycle and a few things I don't like about the motorcycle. The thing I like the most about this motorcycle so far has got to go to the comfort of it. It's just simply a comfortable motorcycle. The handlebars are still something I need to swap out. That is going to come soon. I have the Pro Taper bars and the risers that I will be putting on this bike. I had the exact bars on my Honda CRF 250L and I loved them, so I think they will be perfect for this motorcycle. But back to what I absolutely love about the Ergos is the fact that there's so many places to sit on this motorcycle. You could just sit comfortably right in the center of the bike the way it's designed to be ridden and you are in one hell of a comfortable position ready to ride for hours to come. Uh, the next thing I would say is you could always kick your feet up on these uh, inner bars lean back a little bit and you're riding a damn cruiser so now we're on a cruiser motorcycle comfortable as hell <laughs> my next favorite thing though the way i've been riding this bike the most is i started kicking the passenger pegs down and then i realized we we're in straight up good old-fashioned super sport adventure riding <laughs> so it's just another way to like change up and get comfortable Obviously you can scoot forward, you can scoot back, you can kick your feet up in the back, you can kick your feet up in the front. There's just so many ways to ride this motorcycle and get a little extra comfort and make that commute a little bit longer or the ride a little bit longer than you know maybe you would have wanted to. And then the next thing uh, I would say about the bike that's cool, there are so many things you can buy for this bike. The aftermarket world for this, if you want to buy expensive stuff, inexpensive stuff, there's so many things out there for this motorcycle. I've been eyeing all the Tusk stuff, kind of enjoying that. I bought the, the side bags, I bought the tank bag, and I also bought like a, a large luggage for the rear, but they sent me the small luggage with the wrong tag on it. So the next thing I've got to say is kind of a good and bad thing, and that is going to be the fuel tank size. Having the 6.1 gallons is freaking awesome, and I easily ride 220 per tank, which yes the bike will go farther than that but i generally like to manage 220 and, and fuel up so like having that bigger tank is awesome but what i'm noticing is i tend to ride way too fast on the freeways and especially with this bike you know it's revving real high i'm i'm running down the highway at 75 85 miles an hour that is way too fast for a klr you can tell the bike is humming and I, <laughs> the fuel economy just dumps so hard and that's not the bike's fault that i ride uh, i just think going that fast that's it's just not really smart i get it i know just saying that's what i like to do i like to ride a little bit faster and it uh, doesn't handle it all that great but if you're riding reasonable speeds this thing gets a lot of you get good fuel mileage and it'll go a long ways on tanky gas and to me that is absolutely rad i hate filling up a motorcycle every day or every other day as my commute is a 45 mile one way so i get almost three full days if i feel like pushing it i could get three full days the next thing that i could say i've really liked about this bike is how well it actually handles the road even with these dirt tires i've damn near rubbed the push strips off of these things because I'm freaking hanging off the side of this thing having a good time on some back roads and yet the bike still feels really good doing it so like I think that's freaking great it's pretty damn good off-road it's pretty fun on road and you could get pretty dang aggressive with it and have a ton of fun with it so to get to something I don't like about it the one thing that's kind of annoying the hell out of me is the way the gas cap is like it's nice because it doesn't like come off the bike it flips open but it's big and bulky 
and it's not similar to other motorcycles. And the reason why I think that sucks is because I want to buy those nice little clip-on freaking bag systems where you can just quick release, slide it off, or a quick, you know, slide it back on and it grabs onto the little clamp that would go around the normal sized motorcycle fuel tank. I think that would be rad to have on this bike. It's a pretty minor annoyance, especially now that I've got the, what is it, Olympus, Tusk Olympus bag. Like, it actually fits really good. All the little weird straps that come with it, the whole buckles to stay that stay in place when you take the bag off is pretty cool. I like this bag, so, you know, that complaint is fairly minimal. Just buy yourself a bag that actually works, like I did, and you'll be just fine. But definitely worth noting to me, I think it would be neat to have, like, just the normal freaking gas cap that every other motorcycle has so we could buy that cool little clip. The other thing that sucks about the bike is gonna be no sixth gear. I don't know why that's so annoying. I mean, I know why. <laughs> we would, the bike would handle the freeway so much better if it had one more run out, you know, overdrive the sixth gear basically. It would make this bike a little less buzzy on the freeway and make it kind of push out a little bit farther, have a little bit longer legs. And I don't think that that would have been that difficult for them to accomplish. Uh, uh, and maybe that's maybe they're just trying to bring the KLR back to life and then maybe they'll give us the inline two with all those little features and make this a better on-road bike uh, not to say that it's a bad on-road bike or a highway bike uh, because like I said I've been riding this thing every day for a month and it is keeping me warm it is keeping me comfortable and getting me to and from work and I'm actually enjoying it so as much as I want that sixth gear and think that would have made this bike a lot better, it's still fine. I still would buy it again. <laughs> There's no doubt I would buy this thing again. So for the last thing that I don't really like is obviously the gauge cluster. There's, there's nothing there. Now a good positive is the fact that there's no electronics on this motorcycle. I don't have anything. I don't have ABS. I have absolutely nothing and I like that. I would however like a little bit nicer gauge cluster and uh, of course a tachometer would be freaking fantastic I think that would be a huge improvement for this bike to have something like that but I will tell you out of the month of riding this thing and riding it fairly aggressively I have only redlined it one time and that was getting on the freeway and I knew I was I was holding that gear out a little bit too long and I felt it redlined. Other than that, it's only happened once, which I gotta say, this bike just doesn't give you that feeling of, I need to redline it. It's got enough torque down low to have some fun. It gets it good enough to where you're not like, I, I need more power, like it, it goes fine to me. So I don't notice or care that I'm not paying attention to a rev limiter. Like that, now that you don't have it, you'd never, you're never looking for it. <laughs> so like, you're just used to riding it without it and you're rarely riding this bike trying to redline it like why would you even want to redline this bike it kind of defeats the purpose of it i guess <laughs> but one month with this thing 2500 miles absolutely loving it to talk about some things of how the bike's holding up i would say the front tire it's starting to wear a little funky like all my front tires do and that usually has to do with the suspension not being adjusted perfectly to my weight which let's face it we can't adjust this motorcycle so it kind of is what it is and then of course the rear tire it's pretty much done uh, the center of it is almost completely flat so i already need new tires one month into owning this bike 2500 miles now don't get me wrong who, who it's rare to put 2500 miles i think on a motorcycle but in a month anyways but needless to say I've already burnt out that rear tire. In my opinion, pretty good off-road. I think it handled sand okay. Uh, compared to the Tenere 700 I ra rode out in the same spot, the sand was a little bit uh, soft and I felt more comfortable in the soft sand on this KLR than I did the Tenere 700. So that, that has nothing to do with the bikes, I think. I think that's more of a tire. And I think that the tires on the Tenere are definitely way better on road but i also think they're not as good off-road but i think honestly those are the tires the tires that come on the tenere are what i'm going for next because i do 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 more on-road riding than off oh and i have found some nasty rain i bet you no so other than that everything else is holding up pretty good on the bike i am pretty happy with it i don't have any real major complaints that would make me not want to get rid of it or uh, not enjoy the motorcycle like you said so far i'm truly enjoying it so thanks again for watching guys and i'll see you next week
Bye.